Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to BFW 2401. This is week eight, and we are talking about uh, part three, the portfolio risk for credit risk. So if you allow me now to share, I will just go to the, uh, to the slides. Now, here where the, uh, where the slide, with the recording for part three, will start in your uh, PowerPoint file. Now, before I go to uh, portfolio risk, please remember that we are trying to study those models. And if you are talking about portfolio risk, the way to think about it, we are not calculating here the pricing. We are not calculating here the benchmark. We are trying to see where we can put our loans or our investments, which means the diversification to avoid the uh, concentration risk and to avoid the intrinsic risk and to make a, a, a better portfolio that will not impact the whole return of the bank. So those models actually are trying to help us how to do that. Now, for each model, there is a concept. For example, if you look at here, we have here three models. We have here the uh, migration analysis, and we have what we call the concentration method. There is another thing, uh, another model, which I already omitted, which called the uh, regulatory models. Regulatory models, you are not responsible about it. So if you see it in your slides, I'm not just concentrating on the migration analysis and the concentration limits. You will see another box for the, what we call, uh, regulatory models, we are not covering the regulatory models. We are just concentrating on those two. Now let me start with the immigration analysis. The immigration analysis is based on the rating of the loan pools or sectors as uh, uh, tracked by the industry. Now, if the actual rating deteriorates faster than the historical experience, that will make, uh, you know, you have to decrease your lending in this area. For example, look at this example. Uh, look at this uh, example. If we have, this is beginning of the year. And we are, of course, investing in this area, but this is the whole industry. You have companies in travel A, you have travel in travel B and C, and just a normal rating beginning of the year. During the years, some companies will perform better, some companies will perform uh, you know, worse inside the category itself, the rating category, and they will drop or uh, go up. So for example, if I have 100% of travel A companies beginning of the year, when I come and check them during the year, there will be some migration, they will move to other rating. For example, here, only 85% continues to be in travel A, 10% deteriorates, go to, uh, to, uh, to B. Now two is travel B and three is travel C and three four percent go to C and 1% actually uh, uh, defaulting. So if you add 85 plus 10 plus four plus one, you will find that 100%, which is the 100% I used to have beginning of the year. That uh, scenario applies to B and applies to C. So the question is, so what? It helps us now trying to moving, what happened in now in the market historically will help me to actually update my portfolio. So look at this example. If I am actually investing in B and B say, uh, the moment of, 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 of B, um, for example, for loans that begin, this is in the, in the table I show you, and, and B, 12% uh, of them move to C, um, uh, move, the, move to A, if this is 100% beginning of the year, only 83% continues here, and 12% goes to A, uh, to travel A, and 3% go to travel uh, C, and 2%, uh, to, uh, the rest, which is 2% defaulted. Now, assuming I'm investing in B, my investment is in this category. 
When I come to the real companies that I'm holding, I found more than the industry. I found say 5% moved to C. Here only 3% moved to C, which means I'm holding the worst in the industry or maybe below the average, the worst, because my companies, the companies I'm investing in, their bonds with regard, goes 5%. The whole industry goes 3%, which means in this case, I may consider get rid of this category, which is B, and decide to go to A category. Maybe that will be better, and I will update and you know uh, stop or limit, restrict the uh, lower quality loans and continue with higher quality loans. This is how it helped us moving from one rating to another rating, and this is actually some type of diversification. Now let's go to the second one, which is actually, remember now we are talking about either intrinsic risk or concentration risk, diversification. Now, this is concentration. See, if I am investing, the concentration limit will help me how much I should concentrate in each industry. And in this country or any other countries, we have aviation industry, we have oil industry, we have IT industry, we have um, you know wholesale industry, all those industries, you can find them in the, uh, um, the classification of the Ministry of Industry in this country. And you can find this uh, classification in the country. So if you are, you can talk about farming industry, you can talk about all those industries. So uh, and this, this model will tell you what is your limitation of what, how much you can lose from your capital. You have to start with that point. And when you know how much you, 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 you can lose in your capital, which is the maximum tolerance of losing from my, your capital if you invest in such industry, you have also to look at the losses in that industry. So look at this example. If there is an industry, uh, if, the, if the maximum capital that I can lose is 5%, which means if I have $10 billion uh, of capital in the bank, the bank, for example, have $100 billion um, of assets, my capital is $10 billion, for example. So I can, I can, my tolerance, if I invest in the aviation industry, like Air Asia, Malaysian Airlines, or you can talk about any other country, is 5% of that 10 billion capital, which comes to 500 million. For example, this is the worst situation. Now, if I want to apply this, I can know from the, from the industry, how much each industry, the loss rate, the loss rate in those, industries and you can calculate it and it's actually reported. So I will come now with this formula, which is the maximum limit. The maximum limit, which means how much loans I should give to this industry based on these two conditions. My maximum limit of losing, I cannot lose more than that is 5%. My, uh, and, and they have the loss rate in that industry. So if I apply this, I will say, 5%, which is, it will tell you that the maximum limit is actually maximum loss as a percentage of my capital, which is the 5%, and one over the loss rate, which is the 10%, which means now it's 50%. What do you mean by 50%? 50% means this is the maximum of my capital, of my capital, not on my assets, on my capital that I can invest in this industry. And my capital, as I said, 10 billion, how much I will invest, make so in this industry, 5 billion. My total investments, my total assets, and in this industry should not exceed 50% of my capital. Not 50% of my assets and my capital, okay? Because the capital is the one that will, uh, at the end, uh, you know, uh, absorb the, the risks. So let's, let's highlight this one and show you what, how it happens. So just to prove it, so how much the maximum loss? It's 5%. So assume my capital is 10 billion, maximum loans will be given 50% of that, which is 5 billion out of the 10 billion. If you can look at the losses, it will be 5 billion times the 
which is actually the most rate in this industry. So this is the 500 million. This is the total losses I can have. Prove it. So if I want to prove it, it's actually, this is actually equals 5% of my capital. If my capital is 10 billion. This is 5% of it, which is the 500 million, which is the next one losses. This is how can we use the concentration of it. Now, regulatory model, as I told you, please um, uh, don't worry about it. We will not talk about it. Um, let me go down to the uh, third one, which is the, uh, uh, this is the MBT is very important, uh, which is the uh, modern portfolio theory. And modern portfolio theory, what does it help us? How it help us? It help us to keep updating, updating our portfolio. And this is actually coming from the, uh, you know, investment class uh, called the portfolio theory. All we have to do is to calculate this curve. Now this curve called uh, uh, the uh, investment foreign tier. So if you look at this black dot and this black dot B and A, all of those actually type of uh, uh, portfolios, different portfolios. And why they are here, why this one is here, why this one is here, we have, uh, we can have so many of them and computers of course and programs can do all of this. They can make all those combination because they know the return and the rest of each company. So all I have to do in this, uh, what you call investment volunteer, is to allocate, choose a portfolio, because I will have so many portfolios, that gives me the best return with the least risk. So I have to calculate the least risk first and see that least risk, which one, uh, what return it gives. So this is the best return I can have. So in this case, I have to calculate the expected return and I have to calculate the risk, the portfolio risk. And then, uh, you know, put this, all of those and connect this graph and choose uh, some type, the least risk. This is the least risk among the three. If you look A, B, and C, you would choose the least risk and see if it is the least risk, how much returns it gives. So this is actually return risk, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, y-axis is the return and the x-axis is the rest. You choose the list point and then connect it to here and find the return. This is the return of the, uh, yeah. You have the return of the, uh, of the portfolio and you can calculate the return for the portfolio and the rest of the portfolio and dot the point, both the point and then, you know, I just connect the, uh, those, those dots, which is the portfolios and choose this point. Now let me, this is the whole thing, how it works. Now let me show you um, this one, for example. Um, we have, uh, this is just a small portfolio, loan one and loan two, the average of them uh, 40 and 60, uh, the return of them 10% and 12%, and standard deviation is actually uh, 0857, 098, and this is the variance, and this is, the correlation of the variances, the correlation of the return, and this is the correlation of the variances of the uh, tutorial of those uh, 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 of those two uh, assets. You can have hundred assets here. So now, uh, first of all, I have to calculate the uh, return, and it's very easy because I will get just this. I will just only work with this box. So the, um, the uh, weight times the return, weight times the return and find that 11.2% uh, and if it is I'm building portfolios, this will be here, of course, this will be in this area, the return of the portfolio, it will be here. Then I have to calculate the return. Now the return is a complicated issue, not complicated, it's just too much calculation and the formula is actually here you can see it, it's here. And the meaning of the formula is here. 
So all of this are given uh, in this formula. So I have to calculate the uh, weight uh, times the variances plus the correlation of the variances based on the weights and then times the uh, what we call the uh, uh, correlation of the uh, uh, the covariance so this is the covariance and this is actually the correlation between the two and then i find it to be 3.55 now i will put it here i can have now one more and third and fourth and fifth and keep putting them there based on the return on the y-axis and on the x-axis based on the rest and then connect as I told you the investment point here and choose this point which gives you the list the list of this uh, uh, what you call uh, risk and of course it will continue with return and this is your best portfolio according to the what according to the MBT, which is model portfolio theory. Now I'm done with all of this, except now we will go to the managing the credit risk. Now managing credit risk, we can use what we call the, uh, the hedging, uh, the, uh, the derivatives. And we have six types of derivatives. We have credit forward, futures and um, catastrophic risk. Uh, and we have three types of options. And we have one credit swaps. Now, um, for the, for the um, uh, exam purposes, um, I will not, you know, check with you the payoffs and the calculations. I just want to know, I want you to know what kind of actually uh, derivatives we have to hedge our credit risk. And, um, uh, and that's all about it. It will be, there is no calculation about it. Maybe it's only this slide. So the credit forward swaps, uh, the credit forward, it's a contract between two, right? This is pro this protects me against what? It, uh, this is specifies a credit spread on benchmark issued by a borrower. This is actually helping me if I invest in, in some type of investment and some type of bonds, for example, for my company, uh, or loans, for some type of borrower, those two big companies, uh, you know, which they have ratings, but their ratings keep changing. And if the rating keep changing, my spread keep changing. So if I give a company, for example, when it was an A, travel A, and suddenly after one year, it's already travel B. Now my risk with this company is high. I charge them a small spread because they were travel A. I need somebody to protect me against these movements. So uh, the credit forwards actually does this one. It specifies a credit spread on a benchmark issued by the borrower. So they will put some type of benchmark. If it goes under this benchmark, there will be a compensation between the seller and the buyer of this, of this uh, credit forwards. So this is a hedging against decline in credit quality of borrower. I gave a company when it was travel A and everything was okay. Then it goes down. Uh, maybe they are not defaulting. It's just, I am taking more risk with them. And so I should have had more defaulting. Have I knew that they would drop? Um, I will have, I should have more spread uh, and more premium. But now somebody will give me this difference if this, if something like this happens and the ratings go down with this company. Uh, number two is futures and catastrophic risk. Extrophic future loss property causality insurance to hedge extreme losses that are caused after major disasters. And this is happening. For example, you have all those houses. This is happening all the time in the United States on the East Coast and the West Coast. Especially when we go to this area like Florida and all these areas, you have always those tornadoes, they come and destroy all the houses. Now those houses is actually under mortgages, which means the borrower now cannot pay. And if they cannot pay, this mortgage actually belongs to the bank because it's the lender. This future and catastrophic risk will compensate 
this disaster. It's like insurance. Now we have credit spread options. We have digital default options and we have catastrophic call options. Remember all those options, when we talk about options, it's some type of derivatives where we exercise only if we choose to. So the credit spread call option will protect me against what? The payoff of it, which means uh, how much I would get out of, out of it. It's, uh, it. It increases as the default risk premium on benchmark bond of borrowers increases above some exercise spread, like this one, like the credit forwards, but the credit forwards between two people where if this, if the quality goes up, you have to pay them. If the quality goes down, they have to pay you. Here, no, it's just an option. If they goes down, then in this case, um, you will uh, exercise that option. Otherwise, you will not exercise it. Now, the digital default option, uh, this is just base state uh, amount in the event of loan defaults. Um, this is an option if, the, 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 uh, uh, if there is a defaulting, uh, you know, you exercise the option and they will pay you. Uh, we have another catastrophic uh, call option like this uh, future catastrophic risk. And this is hitch risk of unexpectedly high losses being incurred by property causality insurance as a result of catastrophes. Uh, so this is, uh, this is actually help the same purpose of this future contract. However, the future contract between two parties and you, there is, must be a compensation between the two parties. Here, no, it's only if there is a problem um, and then it goes under those, uh, uh, you know, what you call um, strict, uh, strict uh, or the exercise uh, value of the, of the loan and there is uh, losses, then you actually, you uh, exercise this option. And actually uh, this is related to catastrophic, uh, like earthquakes, you know, um, hurricanes, all those things. Now we have the, the last one, which is credit swaps. Um, we have two total return swap. Now, this swap involving an obligation to pay interest at specific fixed rate or floating rate for payments representing the total return on these specific amounts. The pure credit, credit swaps, it's just, um, they take the interest rates away and they leave you with the credit risk, which is the principal value of the loan. So the sensitivity, uh, they take it away. They just talk about the, uh, the credit risk, which means the, um, they will not deal with the changes in the interest rate, but they will deal whether the, there is a defaulting, actually a defaulting according to the contract between the, um, uh, between the, uh, you know, the lender and the borrower. Uh, they are not, worried about whether the interest rate goes up and down, the sensitivity, but they are worried about the, like what happens with the CDOs, CDOs was type of those swaps. Now, um, actually I had, uh, you can look at all of those. I think I have a problem here uh, of this credit for forward swaps, uh, credit for contract, which is I think here. Look at this example. This is hedging risk, credit risk, with credit spread forward contracts. These are forward contracts. And please understand what is the difference between forward contracts, between options. I think you know it by now, but forward contracts is a contract between two. So in this case, you have a um, um, uh, bank issues 5 million loan to a firm with A. Uh, it is a credit rating. As I told you, this helps us against what? I guess the drop in the rating. Uh, now, the modified duration of this one is 4.5 years. At the time of the issue, the credit spread for this uh, customer was 2%. But now later on, uh, the bank believes that the borrower credit rating has been fallen. So to hedge uh, its credit risk, the bank sells 5 million credit spread forward contract. Uh, subsequently, at the end of the forward uh, period, the borrower credit rating actually declined to trouble B. Now, what you do, uh, the credit spread between trouble B, yes, double B and, uh, and, the, uh, and A is actually 5%. Uh, one of them is 3%. 
The other one is uh, uh, 5%. So the treasury bond is 5%. So this is the difference. So the changes in the market value of the loan uh, to the bank from the duration is actually 675. If you look at this, this is the change on the loan. So this is the what we call the duration model. So we have the change on the loan, of the value of the loan, based on the change in the interest rate, which is the, the, uh, uh, the spread, the rating, because now you are discounting based on the new uh, rate. Uh, so now, because the, the spread was less when it, it is A, now when it is B, the spread is I, which means the changes in R has been increased and therefore the value of the loan, according to the duration model, has dropped by 675. So however, the bank hit uh, this risk with credit spread forward and received from the credit spread uh, the 5% minus the 2% because the drop is 3%. It was 2%, now it is 5%. When it is travel A was 2%. When it is um, B, it's 5%. So um, this is what they will pay you, between the difference between the five and the two, 3% time the loan, uh, time the duration, time the value of the loan, which is 625. So actually this bank did not lose anything. I mean the hedge. The rest is okay. Uh, I think, uh, please understand that we can also manage credit risk, and this is, should be known to you, uh, through uh, sales, uh, loan sales and securitization. Uh, we can just sell the loan and we get out of credit risk and we collect its money and that's it. This is one of the, of the we use, uh, uh, you know, a securitization. But of course, we have to be careful when we use securitization and loan sales because, um, you know, there is um, this customer relationship. They come to you, they take the loan for you. Then suddenly they are requested to pay their installment to another seller and later on another buyer. And later on another buyer come. If this customer is yours, um, maybe that will lose the uh, relationship between you and your customers. And then we have also to look at the moral hazard. We don't have, we have to be careful not to issue bad loans and then sell them. Um, that is a moral hazard issue. Uh, this is the summary and I am actually done. Thank you very much. I hope this didn't take a long time and I will just stop it here and I will see you in class. Bye-bye.